Rub up your engines! Well, now it's a certainty that Toyota's going to make that little stout pickup truck. It's going to be in 2025 model, which is, of course, late 2024. And most people are saying, hey, it'd probably be worth the wait. You know, they had a radical thing when Toyota started selling those little pickup trucks. They sold like hotcakes, right? Hey, if they make something that looks as good as this, here's a rendition. It's a computer rendition because, of course, they're not making them yet. But if they do and they say it's going to be under $20,000, you know they'll sell the heck out of them. Ford's selling a bunch of those Mavericks, but it turns out that Ford Motor Company doesn't really like it. They want to make more profits selling the bigger ones. So, <laughs> if Toyota starts making a little truck, you can say bye-bye Maverick. Just like, you know, in the beginning, Ford sold a lot of Ford Rangers. Now they can barely give away the Rangers and the Toyota Tacomas are selling like hotcakes. Toyota's taken that market over from Ford a long time ago, right? So if they do make the Stout and it's a good little pickup truck, they will blow Ford out of the water. You know they will, right? And it's just like the Maverick. It's not a body on frame. It's using Toyota's new architecture where they share a bunch of things so it'll have the basic underpinnings like the RAV4, which have been proven to last forever. So uh, Ford better watch out with all their quality control problems. And then they're whining the dealers that we don't want to sell these Mavericks because we don't make enough profit. They're too cheap. We want to sell the big F-150s all loaded for 60, 70,000 bucks a piece, right? Well, guess what? Greed gets you in the long run, Ford, and it's going to bite you in the rear end. When Toyota comes out with a stout, low price pickup, I guarantee you the sales of your Mavericks are going to go right down the toilet, just like they did with the Ranger. Ranger was king for a while. A lot of people like the Rangers, right? But the last decade, their sales have been going, <laughs> and the Tacoma sales are going, <laughs> <laughs> and the same thing will happen if they start making these, and they said, late 2024, they'll have the 2025 Toyota Stouts, and you know they're going to sell the heck out of them. Brian Phillips says, what do you think of Mazda's 2.5 turbo engines? Have you seen them coming for repairs frequently? Well, not frequently, but I have seen them blow. 2.5 is a decent size four-cylinder engine, so it's not a tiny one, but it still is turbocharged, and I have seen them blow. Now, I don't know the whole history of the ones that blew. Could be they didn't change the oil enough. Could be they just over an engine. If you drive like a maniac, any car eventually will explode. For example, Honda makes excellent motorcycles, screaming little monsters, but if you keep them redlined as fast as they can go, even the Hondas, they're going to blow up eventually from too much stress, too much revving them up high, so they, they're good engines, but I have seen them blow up. You're always going to see a turbocharged engine blow up before normally aspirated because it has more pressure, means more wear, and they're going to wear out faster. A Frog's Journey says, Scotty, I got a Jeep Wrangler, manual tranny, 2,900 pound camper, 3,500 max towing cap. Do I need additional cooler for the engine to avoid overheating? Well, you really shouldn't. You got a manual transmission, right? Because the automatic transmissions also use the radiator cooled automatic transmissions. The standards don't. You're not cooling as much stuff. If you see the temperature's fine, fine, right? If it did, I would say get aftermarket radiators. The one you get is either a one or a two car. I get a four car radiator. It's a bigger radiator. Just replace it with a larger radiator. They make a lot of aftermarket stuff for Jeeps and you can find four car radiators, which are much better than the factory ones and it will cool better. But if you drive it around and the temperature gauge stays where it is, you don't have to do anything. Trigity 1080 says, Scotty, 2006 Cummings, Power Stroke or Duramax? Simple. I'd go for a Cummings on 2006. Cummings makes excellent diesel engines. Both the Power Stroke and the Duramax of those ages had problems as they aged. The Cummings is the best diesel engine out there in that kind of price range. They are. They're, they just are. You see them in a lot of stuff now. They, they're putting Cummings in some of the Nissans. Chrysler products have Cummings engines in them. They are excellent engines. I, by far, I'd go them over the Ford and the GM diesel engines. They are excellent diesel engines. Arvid Perimi says, Scotty, what do you think regarding a used 2016 Toyota Venza V6 versus the 2016 Highlander in Canada? All right. Well, what do you want? You know, I mean, the engines and everything are pretty similar. <laughs> I just say, what do you want? Do you want the thing that looks like a Venza? You want the thing that looks like the Highlander, right? The Highlander's got more space and stuff for carrying stuff, but the Venza's cooler looking and has a much smoother ride. So basically, road test them and see which one you like. They're both good vehicles, so. And don't listen to anybody. The 2016s, right? Have a mechanic like me check it out. Don't trust anybody selling a used car, including the dealers. People will lie, cheat, and steal. That's why when you go to the dealer and you look at a used car, it always says, as 
is no warranty. You got to have your own mechanic check it out before you buy. You don't know if they're wrecked, flooded, stolen. You don't know the history. Get it checked out. But they're both good vehicles. See which ones you like and see what's available in your area too. Sometimes you might have your heart set on one thing if there aren't any for sale. Hey, what are you going to do? Swim LX4 says Scotty, should I get a Nissan Leaf or a Chevy Bolt EV? Well, I would definitely go Nissan Leaf, but I personally wouldn't buy either. I would not buy an electric car. I'm testing one out right now. And this particular one's a BMW. It's got a range of about 70 miles. What a ridiculous car. 70 miles and you're out of power. Now, it's an old one. It's 2015. The newer ones go further, but they don't make the BMW i3s anymore. 2022 was the last, last year, and then they stopped making them for bad sales. I mean, how many cars are you going to sell when you can't go there? Right? I'm not into electric cars because I travel from Tennessee to Rhode Island back and forth six times a year. There's no way I'm going to do it in a stinking electric car that's got a short range, right? Now, if you're a city, well, maybe you're happy with something that can go 80, 90 miles and recharge it at home. That's your own business. And if you are, get the Leaf. Don't get the Bolt. The Bolt's junk. The Leaf is much better made than the Bolt. And they're not making the Bolts anymore. They say, ah, we're going to stop making them. Yeah, that was their biggest seller. Chevy's biggest electric seller is the Bolt. So, brilliant Mary Barr, their CEO, says, oh, we're not going to make those anymore. Sounds like these people need a change in leadership. BDJ Money says, Scotty, I got an 09 Jeep Patriot with 200,000 miles. Recently, the car's been shutting off on its own. Wow, I've never seen an 09 that had 200,000 miles. Didn't have a bunch of work. Engine, transmission replaced. But if yours is starting to shut up by itself, first thing you want to do, change the fuel filter. Could be a clogged fuel filter. If it's not that, pressure test the fuel pump. If it's weak, your fuel pump will just turn off and shut off. Now, if it's not those, if it is some type of electronic problem, if a guy like me, drive it with a fancy scan tool. When it dies, we look at that data. Our machines record the data while we're driving. And when a car dies, we would just push a button on the screen. And it memorizes the last 30 seconds. So it would show what system broke down. Then you could go from there. Maybe you lost crank sensor. Lots of things can happen. The machine will show it if it's not the obvious things like a fuel filter or a weak fuel pump. JJ says, Scotty, do you think it's all still worth becoming a mechanic nowadays? I'm 18 and wondering if it's a good career. All right, if you like fixing things and if you like working on electronics, go right ahead. If you don't like electricity and electronics, run away from fixing cars because they're going into more computer. And whether or not we go into full electric cars, that might take decades, but all the cars today are all computer and electronically controlled anyways. You got to understand all that stuff. If you like doing it, hey, you can be like me. You can make a lot of money doing it. Not that many people are good at fixing things. Most people don't like working. I know we get my hands dirty. Ooh, right? Hey, you like getting your hands dirty? Still can be a great career. You know? If you're into electronics. But like I say, if you're not into electronics, forget it. Mechanical stuff, that's gone by the wayside. Everything's going electronic. Bill P says, Scotty, please tell me I should change the plugs at 30,000 miles on a 2012 Prius. That's what I've been told. I don't believe them. They're trying to rip you off. Okay, those Priuses have iridium spark plugs. Iridium. I've seen those things last 200,000 miles. Now, I do advise people, maybe change it 100, 120,000, right? Because what the heck? They're easy to get to. There's only four of them, right? On screw screw going back in. 30,000, you're wasting your time. They don't wear out that fast. The iridium plugs have a minimum lifespan of 100,000 miles. Now, if they wear out before that, that means you got a problem in the engine. If you got a bad piston, bad something, yeah, then it's going to wear the plugs out too. If you just have a normally running one, 100,000, I wouldn't even touch it before that. Well, of course, nobody wants to talk about this, so I will. I just read some economic information. They had a chart and they showed how much more money these, in quotes, green electric systems are going to cost. Us. Our electric bills are going to go whoop right up the roof because the stuff's expensive to build, expensive to maintain. Who's going to pay for it? Us, the consumers who buy the electricity. Now, I laugh because they're always trying to make it look like it's bigger than it is, right? Here's two facts and put together, you think, wow, that's really something until you actually analyze it. First, they said that in the first quarter of 2023, 12.5% of all electricity and generation in the U.S. came from wind turbines, right? 12.5%. But right at the it says the use of rooftop solar panels increased by 24%. So you think, well, they create very little electricity. The fantasy of these people, the money you spend. I and my neighbors here in Rhode Island have checked it out, and the smart ones all said, 
on that. It costs you a fortune to put it on. It's going to destroy your roof from the weight. They have a limited lifespan. You also have the battery backup system on it. By the time you're done, you're spending over a hundred grand around here to do it. And believe you me, you will never recoup that investment. I talked to economic advisors. I said, okay, crunch the numbers. They crunched them and they said, no way, you'll never even recoup it because the little bit of electricity they generate, you're never going to recoup that for the money that you put in. When did some idiot come up with the idea that everyone should make their own electricity? The reason we have power generating plants is because it's more efficient. If everybody generates their own, that level of inefficiency and cost is absurd. Think of a neighborhood. If you had 50 houses and they each had to spend a hundred grand, that's a lot of money. You're better building a plant somewhere that does it efficiently, not having individuals do it and put the responsibility on us to generate our own electricity, right? I mean, come on now. Do you build your own car? No, you buy it. It's made in a factory. Why should you generate your own electricity? And then they come up with these ridiculous figures the first quarter of this year compared to the first quarter of last year. They're not telling you the percentage of power they generate, which is minuscule, totally minuscule. The other day, uh, Siemens in Europe, they lost 27% of their stock value because they said, well, gee, these are wind turbines. They're breaking more than we thought. They're costing more money than we thought to upkeep. So, and their stock started to go because people are realizing this is a full blown fantasy that governments in this group green nonsense they're trying to throw out on people. It's not an efficient way to generate electricity. It just isn't. Everybody's got this fear of nukes. I don't know why, they just do. Nuke plants are fine. In Ontario, like well over half the electricity is generated by nukes and they've never had a problem, right? If you do it right, it's a very efficient, good way to make electricity clean. It doesn't pollute the air. Doable thing. There's lots of uranium around. We're not going to run out of that anytime soon. It doesn't throw pollutants out like fuel. It doesn't kill the birds. It doesn't break down every eight, ten years and you got to do it over. They throw these figures out at you. Like a professor told me at university one time, hey, there's lies, there's damn lies, and there's statistics. And statistics, you can prove whatever you want just by changing a little thing. Let's make it look bigger so it makes that look bigger. Let's make it look smaller so it looks like it's not much. It's all baloney when it comes to these people. All baloney. They'll take these figures and make them look big when they aren't big. There isn't that much electricity generated by solar panels in the United States. There just isn't. And putting it on your house is just plain stupid. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.